fair value gap. So I want to call marketing efficiency and imbalance. What is a fair value gap? What are the characteristics of a fair value gap? What makes it valid and what makes another invalid? And what time frames do you use to trade fair value gap? And the most important, how do you trade these fair value gaps? I'm Wanjiro Gishangi from Forex Exploit Trading Academy. And on this session, I'll be taking you through fair value gaps. If you're new to the Exploit community, feel most welcome. You're welcome to watch our other videos. You're welcome to interact with us. Leave us a comment, a like, a tab, subs, and let us know which other topics you'd want us to include. For the community members, thank you for the continued support. We learn and grow together. Do not forget that in 2024, this is the strategy that you're paying my attention to. So make sure that you watch this video, look out for the rules, and I wish you the very, very best. If you're on Facebook, join our community, the Forex Exploit Online Academy page. This is where we do our live sessions. This is where you can ask your questions. And again, this is where you can get all the books that I have written about Forex. Make sure to get a copy depending with your trading skill level. So let us get started. So what is a fair value gap? A fair value gap is a market inefficiency that is created when there is an imbalance between the market participants. If you're on the buying market or the buying cycle and the sellers are not pushing as much or the buyers create an imbalance where there is a lot of dominance, then the market is going to create that one thing that we call the fair value gap. Now, to identify your characteristics of a fair value gap is that you need three candlesticks. You need to see how the market has been progressing. The tail of the first candlestick and the weak or tail of the second candlestick, the space between the two and there's some dominance or there's one participant pushing the market, this area is what we refer to as the fair value gap. You can see that the sellers pushed the market down, but there is this phase that they were not fully represented or they were not pushing as much. This is what we call the buy side market inefficiency. Now, on the sell side, we have the three candlestick. The market between the week of the first candlestick and the week of the second candlestick, again, this is what we refer to as the fair value gap or market inefficiency. Now, what's the difference between a valid or what makes a fair value gap valid while the other is invalid? It's very simple. When you open your charts, and I'm going to show you a trade example that just happened a few days ago so that you get to understand them all. But once you open your chart, the first thing you want to do as a volume trader or even as part money trader is actually to identify your fair value gaps. Why? Because these are areas that will give you very high value trade setup. Why so? Because the market will always come to correct this inefficiency. Remember, this is, a, this is an imbalance and therefore the market needs to do some correction to make sure that all participants are fully and well represented. Now, what will make a fair value gap invalid? One way that invalidates the fair value gap is those many reactive moves that will come at least 10 to 15 percent or less, touch that fair value gap, then move in the dominant direction. Now, you wait, the market will come back down, yes, but it's going to ignore or it's going to act as if that fair value gap did not exist in the first place. And it will be hunting that point of interest can be a block, can be another fear value gap below that fear value gap that has already had a reactive move. I hope that is clear. Now, if you're on the sell side, again, you do not want to have a fair value gap where the market has come back up and had a mini reactive move then traded away from it. Why? Because when the actual move shows up or when the volume shows up, the market is going to go back up and actually ignore that fair value gap, go back to a POI or a point of interest. Remember, can be another block or can be a key area that stop and now drop down. Okay, so the only way a fair value gap is invalid is because of that mini reactive move. Now, what are the time frames? What are the best time frames that you can spot a fair value gap? 
and you can use it to trade. Now note, the fair value gap pound on the higher time frame uh, actually have a very higher chance of happening compared to the ones that you find on the lower time frame. Now, when we talk about higher time frame, we talk about anything from H4. It can be the 4-hour, can be the daily, can be the weekly, can be the monthly, can be 3 months, can be whichever time as long as it's above the 4-hour. This is what we refer to the higher time frame. Now, on the lower time frame, this is anything H1 and below. Let me throw in a pro tip on this fair value gap. If on H4, you find what we refer to as a strong block. By now, I hope you know the different types of blocks that we have. And in case you do not know, we do have a video on blocks. Actually, it's a series. We have a three video series on blocks, purely blocks. So make sure that you watch that and you know how to trade them. Now, if you have a strong block on H4, and I'm going to give you a very good example that happened last week on cable. If you have a strong block or what we call the engulfing block on a key area on the four hour chart, and this is very, very important. I'm going to show you an example of what happened on cable last week. There are higher chances that on H1 or the one hour chart, you're going to get a fair value gap. Why? Because a strong block or an engulfing block on H4 means a lot of volume. You know, H4 is higher time frame. So we're talking about a lot and a lot of volume. So that one, one candlestick on H4 that has so much volume is likely to give you a very good fair value gap on H1. And therefore you may get an SB on H4, turn to H1, get a fair value gap and be able to trade it. So how do you trade this fair value gap? The easiest way to trade the fair value gap or the market inefficiency is of course break and retest. And I hope by now you've mastered how to trade the break and retest, or you may use the version. So the example that I'm going to show you, we will be using break and retest. And of course, with reference to divergence. If you want to learn about divergence, again, there's the RSI and divergence video. You're most welcome to watch. So let's get to a trade example. This is cable GBP USD. From the four hour chart, we are coming from this low, the market been pushing up gave us a wedge and now it's currently on this range. Now on this range, we have our two key areas created by the base and the end of that move. You see from this wedge, we had a rally base then. With this base now, it became our floor. This is where the market is dancing from. And at the end of that move, we have the ceiling where it's hitting and coming back. So this is where the market has been stuck. Now inside this range, this is where I want you to pay attention to. Note we are on the four hour chart. Now, recently we had this strong move on our floor or what we call the engulfing candle or the strong block. Now going to our one hour chart, on the one hour chart, you see the market is giving a very good fair value gap now before that fair value gap is corrected it's the norm that the market needs to create liquidity so you want to see a lot of tails a lot of weeks all around that area before the market comes back to touch on that fair value gap now let's get to the day when the fair value gap area will be touched or when the fair value gap will be corrected now previously there was that week a lot of volume to be tapped out so on that specific day, we see the market pushing down into our fair value gap with the exhaustion move. Remember, I've mentioned a million times that do not get trapped by this rejection that usually happens with a loss of momentum, then a very tiny green candlestick. Do not enter here. Always wait for the stop hand or always wait for that exhaustion move that will come to tap on your stop losses. Remember, anybody who joined here must have placed their stop loss here. So they need to do that one extra exaggerated move or what we call exhaustion move to tap those stop losses before the market changes. Now, inside after that exhaustion move, you see now the change of color, the change of color. This green candlestick now is your signal to actually pay attention that the market is going to push to the top side. Now, this is H1. So what do you do from here? Now you go to a lower time frame. If you came from the four hour, you expected to enter your trade at least two time frames lower than your market analysis time frame. So it's either H4, you trade with 15 minutes. 
If your market analysis was one hour chart, then you go to the five minute and so forth. So here we started with our four hours. So our best time frame to trade is the 15. If you're using the template, you see the market pushing down, creating divergence, even on your TDI. With the expansion of the band, that shows that volume is present. Now you pay attention to the move that breaks structure. Remember, you have to wait for break of structure. That break of structure must be with an impassive trade or it must be an impassive move, a very strong move. Very, very important. And here we have a very good impassive move now this impassive move should at least give you should give you a fair value gap on the lower remember the concept that i told you if a fair value gap has a mini reaction has a mini reaction into it then it becomes invalidated so this is where now you apply the same knowledge i said if there is a mini reaction look at these two candlestick they came back into the fair value gap the market did not move as much and before the event, there was the monetary, the found the GBP monetary policy day. So this, this reactive move here violated or invalidated our fair value gap. Therefore, that would be enough to tell you that the market will yes come back, but will not be coming back to that fair value. It will be coming back to another block or another area below that fair value gap. And you can see that it actually tapped that kissing candle block we already talked about the marbozo or what we call the kissing candle and with that tail inside that you see the market coming back and tapping on that kissing block and with the event the market pushed up so that is what i was referring to when a fair value gap is invalidated and then you have to check for the next block or the next point of interest that is actually below fair value gap I hope this is clear by this and remember you can do even on a naked chart. So let's do the same on a naked chart. So for traders who are using the naked charts or if you're trading using your phone, this is the same thing. Again, you go to the phone, you check your block, you go to your one hour, you have your fair value gap. Now you go to your trading time frame and you, what you want to see, you want the market to be pushing down. Why? We are on the buy side. We are on the demand side. We want this event to push the market to the top side. So one, you can use your break and test strategy. So you can pick your trend line from your uh, trading time frame and you just cross it. All you need are two points. Eh? You can touch whichever two points that you have, swing points. Then you see that the same candlestick, the same impassive candlestick is the one that has broken your trend line to the top. Now you want to pay attention to that candlestick that has broken your trend line. You want to mark the fair value gap created by that candlestick. Remember, it's the tail for the top candlestick and the bottom candlestick, the point below. Now, again, the reactive move has invalidated your block. You want to pay attention to the area below. Note on a naked chart, you may not actually see the divergence because you don't have a TDI. But in case you place a TDI on it, you're going to get the divergence. Now you see the market again tapping inside that kissing candle block. And from there it retracted and the market gave a very good buy trade. Suppose you also are moving average trade. You can insert a moving average of your choice. The best that works well with entries is of course the catch up or the 13 EMA. Again, you can see the mass, the same candlestick is the one that pushed the market to the top. Now you wait for a retest. Just wait for a retest. And with this strategy, you can only join after. Now the moving average, remember they are lagging. So you can only have this entry, which is also fair and of course risk-free. Why? Because you already have a confirmed move. So you don't have to really struggle with so much. So that is how to trade a fair value gap. One thing that I want you to really pay attention is the reactive move that invalidates them. Do not forget about this reactive move. Okay, this is what will make your fair value gap trading awesome. This is where a lot of traders lose money. Fair value gap trading because of this trade. You're going to be start piling lot sizes here and the market comes back and blow your account. But if you pay attention to the invalidation, then you're going to have very awesome trading. So if you liked this video, make sure that you leave a comment on it and give it a thumbs up, share it with your trading community. Let us go and learn together. Until next time, I'm Wanjiru Gishangi. Namaste.